Hi Shiners, morning Shiners, I'm Tater and welcome to the Mason Jar Mafia. Today's video is going to be for beginners. Now I'm going to try to cover some of the basics of columns and their components. I'm not going to get into huge detail, but I am going to explain a little bit to you so that maybe you get a better understanding of what type of still you might want to use. I figured I'd start today's video off talking about cooling. Now there's different ways to cool your still. I use a 55 gallon barrel. I have in the past used a 20 gallon cooler with ice. You can run straight to a faucet if you want to so you have continuous water. I try to save my water as much as possible and reuse it. Nothing wrong with that. It's not going into my final product. And a lot of people do the same thing. So, in the group distilling traditions, a couple of the members have asked questions about cooling and what we do. Tomcat, one of our members, asked me about pumps. And a couple of his questions was he wanted to know about water pumps, the type I use, he wanted to know about hose fittings, and a little bit about lift. So I'm going to do my best to explain that. And our other member, David Wolf Banks, he was asking about condensers, the different types of condensers, and some of their stronger and weaker points. So we'll see what we can do to cover that for David. Now remember, if any of you have questions, you can either leave it in the comments section, or you can join us on Mealy and Distilling Traditions and talk to us one on one. And you can talk to all the members of the Crazy Eight. We're on there pretty much every day, actually. We're on there almost every single day, each one of us, at different times. So please feel free to join us. So I'm going to get started with Tomcat's question. Tom, you asked about what type of pump. I use. It's simple. I use a Harbor Freight 620 gallon per hour pond pump. Okay? It has, according to the manufacturer, it has 11 feet of lift. Now, to answer your question about lift, lift is the height that the pump will pump water straight up. So that pump will pump water straight up 11 feet, which is more than I need. With pumping from the bottom of that barrel to my condensers on my columns, I only need to 4 to maybe 5 feet. So according to the manufacturer, my 620 gallon per hour pump reduces down to 410 gallons per hour at 4 feet, still giving me more than enough cooling for my columns. It works fine. I don't have an issue with it. So I hope that covered that for you, Tom. David Banks asked about types of condensers. Well, there's a couple different types. There's at least three main types of condensers. You have a worm style condenser, which is a coil of copper tubing sitting in a bucket or a barrel of water. You have cold water going in the bottom of the barrel, and your excess overflow can go off the top. Or you can choose to bucket it out and change it. You can keep ice water in there. However you want to keep it cool. The worm condenser is a very effective condenser. And it's been used for years. It's simple to make for a home distiller. There's not a lot of work to it. You just go to the store. You buy a coil of copper tubing. You stretch it out a little bit. You've got your coils. You set it inside a bucket or a barrel. Seal around it so your, your, your distillate can drip out, and that's it. it. It's about the easiest condenser to make for a product condenser. Okay. Then you have what's known as a Liebig-style condenser. The Liebig 
freestyle condenser is a tube inside of another, of a larger tube. So you have, here I'll show you on this one, you have the line arm here going into your leaded condenser. Your cold water goes in the bottom, your hot water comes out the top, flowing back into your barrel of cold water. Works great. They cool very well and they're very efficient. This is the second easiest one to make. I prefer stainless. I'm a little lazy. I don't like to have to clean copper. But that's just me. It's your choice. But if you want to make your own, they're not hard to solder together with some copper tubing. Pretty simple to make. And it should be easy for the home distiller to, to make. And they're efficient and they work. Now, the taller the column, the bigger your boiler, the larger the leaded condenser you're going to need. There's websites out there with the math needed to show you how big of a condenser you, can, you need to make for your boiler size and your column size. Okay? All you got to do is Google it, go to homedistiller.org. You can look it up in their sections. It'll work great for you, okay? And then finally, David, what we have is a shotgun style condenser. Okay? They're a little more compact than a Liebig. The main reason being is that, let's see if I can get this to show up, is that you have multiple tubes, okay, of the vapors coming through this jacket, condensing it. So you get a smaller package with actually more cooling capacity, okay, because this one has one, two, three, four, five, six tubes the same length as this here. So six times this is the actual length of your, that would be the size of the Liebig condenser you would have to make. So a lot more compact. They're very efficient. Again, they work extremely well. This one has push-on style fittings, if I can get it to unscrew for you that just simply screw into the condenser. It's real simple. And it's like a PEX style. Okay? You just slide the tubing in. It attaches. It doesn't get too much simpler than that. Okay? And there you go. Now, on your product condenser, you don't really need to worry about controlling the flow of water through it. Turn your pump on and let it flow 100% straight through your product condenser and it will condense your product and you'll end up with your distillate coming out working great. Okay? Okay, we're back. I ran into some camera issues that I had to try to get fixed. So I'll see if I can remember where we were. Oh yes, I was going to go over the three different types of columns. There is the pot still column and a reflux column. This is where it gets a little weird. And you have different types of reflux columns. I shouldn't have said three types. So the first most basic type is the pot still. So over here, what we have is a three inch pot still column. The three inch refers to the diameter of the column, okay? That allows the vapor to come up, goes out the line arm, through your product condenser, which happens to be a Liebig condenser, and out the drip tube, okay? Right here, and this is where you collect your distillate, out here. This attaches to your boiler with a tri-clamp. Tri-clamps are awesome. They make your setup completely modular. That's a tri-clamp. Okay? And this 
That's what it does. It clamps the two different pieces together at the bottom. And then you can build kind of whatever still you want. And the second one I have is a CM style column. The CM stands for cooling management. Okay? This is set called a deflagmator. It is a cooling management style. In other words, it's built a lot like the Liebig condenser. The main part of your vapor path on your column runs through a jacketed cooling cooler. Cold water in the bottom, hot water out the top, and that forces the heavier vapors back down so that you get a reflux action up and down. Works great. Now, then we have column style still. God, this thing's heavy. So you have bubble plates, or you have sight glasses, and inside the sight glasses are bubble plates. That's what it is. That is the bubble plate. It sits up inside like this on your still, on your boiler. As the vapors travel up through, they get to the deflagmator, which is this. It's a shotgun style condenser. And that cools the vapors, forcing them back down. They hit the bubble plates, they reboil, and they come back up. So the it's, your vapor is doing this. The lighter vapors continue on. The heavier drop back down, reheat, go back up. Some will go back down into your boiler, and those will come back up again. And that's what reflux causes the reflux. Set this over here. We've got... about condensers. Okay. The Liebig condenser is here. You've got a line arm running through a larger diameter pipe. It acts as a water jacket. Inside this will be your cooling water. It goes in the bottom, comes out the top, and that does your product condensing. You got your shotgun style product condenser right there that has many tubes. You get more cooling in a compact size. They're very efficient and they work very well. That, excuse me, I gotta take a drink real quick. Okay. And there's all manners of ways, and these are all held together here on this one with a tri clamp system. And in between that are gaskets. Gaskets can be a controversial topic in the hobby distilling world. Okay. You have rubber gaskets, which are not good for alcohol vapor. They don't stand up well to it. There's a good possibility of leaching out the chemicals from it because the alcohol acts as a solvent and it can potentially leach the, salt, the chemicals from the rubber out into your distillate, which is not good for you and it just doesn't taste good. Then you have silicone, I don't know if that'll show up, there you go, gaskets. They are a step above the rubber gasket. This is where the controversial part comes in. Some people say 
the silicone gaskets aren't any good, they break down, do the same thing the rubber gaskets do. And then you have the top of the line gaskets, which are Teflon. They don't leach anything, any chemicals out. They're a little more expensive. I don't happen to have any at the moment, so I'm using the silicone. I haven't noticed a difference in the taste. There's very little surface area touching. It's only the small surface area right here. I've been using the silicone gaskets for a couple years. I haven't had to replace any yet. They're not worn. They're not tore. When I replace them, I'll be replacing them with Teflon. I will go with the better route eventually. We've got... This is a needle valve, okay? It's used for controlling the water flow in and out of your deflagmator condensers, which is this style condenser here. You can use it on your product condenser. There's really no need to. It, uh, the product condenser, you just as well off. Let it have 100% flow of water through it and don't worry about it. But this gives you more control, more precise control over your water flow on your deflagmator, which is gives you a higher quality of distillate, a cleaner product, the better, and you'll end up with a higher ABV because of it as well. Okay? You won't have to fight with it as much either. You can, if you don't want to spend the money, use a ball valve. They work. They're relatively inexpensive. They're like six to ten bucks, depending on where you live. The price is going to change. But they're finicky. It takes more fiddling around to get the water flow to where you want it. They work, but like I said, they can be finicky. Let's see, what else we got? Column parts. Okay, let's talk about an onion. This is called a whiskey helmet. Okay, this one happens to have a temp gauge. It reads in both Celsius and Fahrenheit. Its nickname is an onion. Because if you turn it upside down, it literally looks like an onion. Okay? The whiskey helmet is used to slow down the vapor speed. The vapor collects in the helmet. The heavier fossil compounds will drop back down. While the lighter ones go up. The fact that it's copper, the copper helps remove the sulfites and the sulfates from your distillate, giving you a cleaner tasting product. Better quality product. Okay? This will sit directly on top of your boiler. Then you can take any one of the columns, any one, and try clamp it to the onion. I have run this onion with my pot still column and it has made my product taste so much better. It simply sits on top, you put the gasket between, you try clamp them together like that, and there you go. You can use it that way if you want. This one has a three inch opening. So I, can, I have to use my 3-inch column, or I'd have to get an adapter to adapt it down to my 2-inch. I primarily bought, though, to go with my sight glass and bubble plate setup, so I could get a better quality product at home. And it attaches like that with a tri-clamp. Tri-clamps are amazing, folks, I'm telling you. They make your system completely modular. 
And truthfully, over the last four years that I've been doing this, I have learned that starting out cheap isn't necessarily the better way to go. But starting out modular is a good, good way to go. If it takes you a little longer to save up the money, or you have to buy things in a slower fashion, you know, but go with modular. Save yourself a world of headache later and a world of expense as well. Now, heating your still. There's different methods. You can use an open fire, wood fire if you want to. You can go very primitive and use a wood fire. It's very difficult to control. You can use propane slash natural gas on a burner, which I have a couple sitting here. And I will grab one for you. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is just a simple burner, turkey fryer style. You control the gas and the heat with this valve here, and they work very good. I had to switch over to it because my current setup, I don't have electricity out here yet to run electric elements. I do have set electric elements on my boilers and they work fantastically. I have what's known as an SCR controller on it. You just turn the knob. When you first start to heat it up, you turn it to 100%. Heats up your boiler. When you get to a temperature that you know you're still as good at, you can turn it down, let your column and your boiler stabilize, which means the heat in both are about the same. And then that way, you start adjusting it according to the drip flow that you want to make, you want to come out. Low and slow is good, but the bigger your condenser, the faster you can run your still. I happen to like doing it rather slow. I've pushed my stills before, and I think I get a cleaner product. Running it a little slower takes me longer, yes, but I enjoy the product I get off it more. Lemon Shine, official drink of the Mason Jar Mafia. That was for my buddy Tomcat, because he's the one that started me drinking that stuff. Let's see, what else do we have? I think I've pretty much covered the basics. One of the things I have behind me as well is a parrot. This is a parrot. It's called a parrot. Well, kind of looks like one, sort of. This attaches to my shotgun condenser, like so, and collects the distillate coming out so that I can measure the ABV or proof with a hydrometer while it's running. This one in particular has a valve on the bottom so that at the start I can drain all the heads off, heads and four shots off, before it contaminates the rest of the parrot. And when I get into where I think I'm starting to get into the heads, sorry, misspoke, starting to get into the hearts, I can shut this valve off, it'll fill up, my hydrometer will start to float, and then it will tell me the proof coming off of my still. Is it necessary? No. Is it cool? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. We can just uh, take readings through your hydrometer if you want. We just need a glass test tube. I would recommend a glass test tube. They don't, the plastic ones don't take the high ABV well. They'll cloud up on you, making it harder to get a reading, harder for you to see a good reading. And then just start to crack eventually because of the higher ABVs you're producing. 
Okay. Let's see. I can't think. Do I have anything else? I think I've pretty well covered everything. At least as far as a basic concept. There's other videos on MJM, Mason Jar Mafia, that will go into depth. And if you guys have any suggestions, you can always leave them in the comments. And we'll try to answer your questions. If you have suggestions for a video, we can do that for you as well. We do our best. However, occasionally life does get in the way. Ask me how I know that one. So, anyway, folks, it's been good to talk to you. I'm sorry I haven't gotten back to you sooner. As I said, life occasionally gets in the way. Work, family, so on. I know you all have been through it. I want you all to have a great day. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, please. It helps the channel. If you'd like to talk to us one-on-one, -on -one, again, you can join us on MeWe in Distilling Tradition. We also have a website. It's Mason Jar Mafia, crazy8.com, where you can get calculators and there's email addresses so you can directly email whatever particular Mafia member you'd like to speak with. All right, folks, I hope to see you. You all have a beautiful day. This is May 28, 2022. Monday will be Memorial Day. And I would like to wish all of the members of our armed forces, tell them we appreciate you. And have a great day. We will be thinking about you. And remember folks, shine on.